Hello and welcome again to the Burning World Ministry. My name is Sergio Garrido, and what a pleasure to be sharing with you once again um, another stanza uh, from Psalm 119. This is actually the the end of the third stanza, Gamal, and it is my prayer that you continue growing in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that you continue growing in faith, that you continue growing in holiness towards um, before the Lord, and that you continue growing in the fear of the Lord. So Psalm 119, once again, it is an extraordinary psalm. It is 176 verses long, devoted to the sufficiency and perfection of the Word of God. May this study continue being a source of encouragement and blessing to your soul, dear friend or brother, sister. So, as I said, we finished this week with the third stanza. So, we're going to be reading from verses 22 to 24. And it says this. Take away reproach and contempt from me, for I observe your testimonies even though princes sit and talk against me. Your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight. They are my counselors. So this section of this stanza, really, this uh, theme starts on verse 21, which we saw last week, right? Which, uh, um, in this This is a prayer for protection. As the psalmist goes deeper into the world, he becomes a stranger. So as you probably see on verse 19, that's what it says, right? But not only in reference to the world, as you go deeper into the word of God, you might also feel like a stranger in reference to the so-called professed Christians. Even if you start showing some interest in the word of God, Interest in some in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, who He is. Interest in following the Lord. People might start seeing you as a stranger as an stranger already. So there is now position against the psalmist as he goes deeper and deeper into the world. Verse 21 says, You rebuke the arrogant who are accursed, those who stray from your commands. But why this introduction? Because as he goes stronger in the world, he is standing out in this world more and more. He draws in the persecution of the arrogant. And by definition, an arrogant person is someone that makes claims or pretensions to superior importance or rights. Then he says in verse 22, Take away reproach and contempt from me, for I observe your testimonies. Reproach is unpleasant. It is the expression of disapproval or disappointment. Yet, content is even worse. It is the feeling that a person or thing is beneath consideration, that they are worthless and useless. Sometimes, if you, th if you take these things under perspective, When you face reproach or contempt from someone that you don't know, I mean, you say, <clears throat> okay, I mean, uh, it doesn't affect me, right? Because it's a person that I probably I met once and that's it, you know? But when you face reproach and contempt from someone that you value or someone close to you, that's even worse. And, and that really can affect you. That's when we need the Lord to give us that strength to sustain us, right? So what is this reproach and contempt? As God has opened his eyes and revealed his commandment to the psalmist, he has embraced them, he is living them, he is standing for them, and now brings on this verbal attack, this slander, because he is standing completely on the unchanging, timeless truth of God's word. Then in verse 23, it says, Even though princes sit and talk against me, what is provoking this? Is his commitment to the word of God. 
I have good news and bad news for you. Really, it's all good news. As you grow deeper into the Word of God, there will be an ever-increasing joy and pleasure that will come to your life that surpasses anything that this world has to offer. But as you grow deeper and deeper in this pursuit, it will also produce opposition from others. On verse 22, after the psalmist has asked the Lord to deal with the arrogant and accursed, he has protection from his adversaries. He says, take away reproach and contempt from me. From me. This reproach is a malicious accusation and the dragging of his name through the mud. And this contempt is the hatred that is behind the reproach that is driving this. And at the end of verse 22, it's unmistakable and very clear. The reason for the attack he is under. He says, for I observe your testimonies. He is leaving them. He is keeping them. He is ordering his steps according to the word of God and there are those that bring the very worst out of them there is always a price to pay the brother sister friend for your faithfulness to the word of God the one that chooses to believe the full counsel of God and to live by it will suffer reproach and contempt but with very good company you will stand with the author of Psalm 119. The world has never been a friend of truth. And as you stand in the world, it will bring reproach and contempt. In verse 23, he reveals the source of this persecution when he says, Even though princes sit and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. There are those in high places that speak against him. I can't imagine the pressure that the psalmist must have felt. Sometimes we tremble on the inside and are shaken due to family or someone close, someone that we appreciate, <laughs> that will challenge what we believe or even worse. I mean, I mean, it's okay if they challenge us, but when it's reproach and contempt, it is something different, right? And we perhaps are sometimes ostracized. And here the psalmist has been opposed by princes. That's plural. More than one person. There is a conspiracy that is taking place as they come together and they organize their efforts and plot their plan and they convene together. But we need to be clear that while these princes speak against him, he continues to speak openly the word of God. Sometimes it's so easy when we face opposition just to, uh, you know, just to, to go and say, okay, what's the point of being faithful, right? What's the point of me pursuing the Lord if all these things are going to happen? But the Lord wants you to be persistent. The Lord wants you to to seek him even more. Later in verse 46, it seems it's a recurrence. He says, I will also speak of your testimonies before kings and shall not be ashamed. So the psalmist did not back out and continue to speak up the truth of God. At the end of verse 23, he gave us the secret of how he continues on and on. This could be a debilitating experience. Lots of negative energy. How can we continue to function in these type of situations and to press on under this kind of opposition? There's only one way, and it's the supernatural ministry of the Word of God in the life of the believer. It's by you seeking His presence with you. If He is with you, it doesn't really matter who is against you. Your servant, it says, meditates on your statutes. That is what kept him going. This is a supernatural grace and power pulsating through his soul and coming into his life as he meditates in his word, as he considers upon the word, as he thinks upon the word, as he treasures upon the word in his own heart. In this context, 
The implication is that he is able to stand strong. So finally, in verse 24, Here I want you to see a prayer of reaffirmation as he comes to the end of this stanza. I think this verse is to be understood as a bottom line, pulling everything forward towards this bottom line in conclusion. This stanza finish in summary fashion as the psalmist commits himself to the Lord and to his word. Here is the secret of his supernatural living. He says, your testimonies also are my delight. They are my counselors. This is how he is enabled by God to persevere these difficulties of this hour. They are the promises of his word ministering to his heart. It is the immense intensity of the theological truth, the Bible, that provides the foundation for his faith. He says, your testimonies are also my delight. Think about this. In the midst of his pain, in the midst of the dark nights of his soul, in the midst of the turbulent storms of life, he has a sure delight. And it is the word of the living God. God's word is his inner joy and delight during his dark nights. No matter how dark the nights, God's word shines like a torch to any troubled heart, that includes your heart and my heart, and brings the supernatural joy and peace. No matter how great the affliction, I want you to know that the Word of God is sufficient to encourage your soul and to bring joy to your heart. It is the Word of God. His testimony will be today that he was crushed. He was devastated. But it was his Word that brought him through. What is keeping you awake during the night? Does this word reflect a dark situation in your life during this season? Verse 92 on Psalm 119 says this, If your law had not been my delight, then I would have perished in my affliction. And sometimes we feel like that, right? We feel like oh, I can't take it anymore. The stress and the disappointment and sometimes depression. Who knows? And it feels like, a, you know, deep inside we feel crushed. Right? But I invite you today to seek the Lord through His Word. He is going to sustain you. He is going to bring refreshment to you. He is going to give uh, food for your soul. When you see the lives of people that have endured suffering and affliction and have stood firm through these times, you will find that it was His Word that sustained them. And I have good news for you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 8 says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of our God stands forever. If it did this for the psalmist, He will do it for you too, through your afflictions, through your problems, through your sickness. Whatever it is that you might be going through during this season, it might be one of the most difficult times of your life. And in no way I will, um, I just want to underestimate the difficulty of this hour for you. There is a delight for your soul. There is a strength for your spirit that is found in the ministry of the Word of God in your life. I'm talking about plunging into this book and immersing yourself in the message of the truth of this book. I'm not just talking about superficial devotions that are no more than emotional goosebumps for immature Christians. I'm not talking about just reading this Bible verse in Facebook, I'm not, nothing wrong with people do that, but I'm talking about more than that. I'm talking about coming before the Lord and saying, open my eyes that I might behold wonderful things from your law. A prayer that says, my soul is crushed by longing after your ordinances at all times. Speak to me from your word. 
for your word to become the strength and the joy of my life. And it concludes saying, they are my counselors. Not only the word is my delight, but also my direction. His word are his counselors in life. He listens to the word and he follows the word for his guidance and direction. He does not seek the counsel of human wisdom or princes. He seeks the counsel of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that counsel is written forever in the pages of the Holy Scriptures. This is the counsel that he needed and this is the counsel that brought comfort to his heart. The counselors of this book, the testimonies of this book are supernatural of grace poured into our hearts. This book will do for you what no person, institution or group can do for you. It will bring supernatural power and grace to your heart and you will stand strong and victorious as you will be as a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and in whatever he does he prospers. May the Lord bless you. It will be until next time.